In this video, you'll how to combine connectives in propositional logic. Remember, there are four connectives. There's negation, indicated by the tilde and pronounced not, conjunction, which is an ampersand and is pronounced and, disjunction, which is a V and is said as or, and then there's a condition, which looks like an arrow and is pronounced if, then. Just like in math, when you combine connectives, you'll use brackets to show what comes first. What's inside the brackets comes first. First, we'll deal with combining negation. If P stands for the sentence, puppies are cute, then the negation of P is puppies aren't cute. You can then negate that to get, it's not true that puppies aren't cute. Notice how, in both the logical version and the full sentence, you've got two denials. You can actually drop the bracket in this case, since it's not ambiguous. A double negation of P would mean puppies aren't not cute. A triple negation would be similar with an additional denial. It's not true that puppies are not cute. If you have an additional variable, a, which stands for aardvarks are cute, then you can combine them with a conjunction. p and a stands for puppies and aardvarks are cute. Another way to say this is to say both puppies and aardvarks are cute. Then, if you negate this, you get the statement, not both puppies and aardvarks are cute. You just add not to the beginning. Consider a similar sentence, not both of you are going. This means that at least one of you is not going. Not both of you are going means at least one of you is not going, but one of you may be going. Similarly, not both puppies and aardvarks are cute means the same as puppies aren't cute or aardvarks aren't cute. In other words, the negation of P or the negation of A. Notice how the conjunction became a disjunction. This is a general principle and it always applies. Perhaps you're wondering, doesn't the negation of a conjunction equal the conjunction of the negations? In other words, can't you just multiply in the negation so that each of the inside variables becomes a negation? That doesn't work. Consider the sentence, not both of you are going. This can mean that maybe one of you are going. Next, consider the statement, neither of you are going. This says definitely not you are going and not the other person is going. The first statement, not both of you are going, means either one of you is not going or the other is not going. Using the equivalence from the previous screen, that shows that these are not the same. Similarly, if you've got the negation of a disjunction, that becomes the conjunction of two negations. It is not the same as the disjunction of two negations. The reason why this happens is that the disjunction, x or y, can be said either x or y. For example, either today is Monday or Tuesday. If you put a negation in front of that, you get it's not either Monday or Tuesday, which is usually said neither Monday nor Tuesday. 
That means it's not Monday and not Tuesday, which can be written in logical notation as not x and not y. In other words, if x stands for Monday and y stands for Tuesday, the negation of the disjunction becomes a conjunction of negations. Here are some other versions of similar patterns. Notice how you can drop the brackets on the negation because it's clear where it will be. This sentence can be translated as x and not y, for which we often say x but not y. Then we have the similar x or not y, and then not x but y. Again, notice how in each of these cases you can drop the brackets because it's not ambiguous. And a reminder, if you put the conjunction of negations, then that becomes the negation of a disjunction. And the converse is also true. Here are some other combinations. Here you have the conjunction with the disjunction. In the first one, you've got brackets around the conjunction, which indicates that you deal with that first. This is not the same as if the brackets are around the disjunction. For example, consider the three statements, I will have tea, I will have cake, and I will have ice cream. You can say, I will have either tea and cake or ice cream, which means um, if you don't have ice cream, then you'll have both tea and cake. A different sentence is, I will have tea and either cake or ice cream. Notice now that the word either is in front of cake or ice cream, whereas in the first sentence, it include, the either was in front of tea, cake, and ice cream. The first sentence, where the either is in front of tea and cake or ice cream, matches up with the first logical notation, and the last statement matches up with the other one. They mean different things. Next, let's involve the conditional connective. In the first example, the antecedent of the conditional is a conjunction. Here, the condition is that x and y, and the consequent, or result, is z. Here's an example of a statement which has that logical form. If I have tea and cake, then, as a consequent, I'll have ice cream. That's different than this next sentence, where you have a conjunction, and one of the conjuncts is a conditional. This says, I will have tea and, if I have cake, then I'll have ice cream. Here, the condition is Y, I have cake, and the consequence is Z, I'll have ice cream. Notice, in the second sentence, you are definitely having tea, whereas in the first one, it's, it's only a possible condition. It's similar for the difference between x or y implies z and x or y implies z, where the brackets either apply to the entire antecedent or just a Here are some more combinations of connectives. When you have a negation and a conditional, you have a couple of different situations. Can you see the difference? If X stands for today is Friday, and Y stands for I will cry, you can have one sentence which says, it's not true that if it's Friday, then I will cry. This means I don't cry on Fridays. 
Another sentence is, if today isn't Friday, then I will cry. This sentence means, I do cry on days that aren't Friday. Each one of those statements matches up with one of the logical notations, and they do mean different things. Another possible sentence is, today is Friday and I won't cry. The notation for that would be x and not y. However, notice that this means the same thing as the first sentence, indicated with the green arrow. In other words, the negation of a conditional means the same thing as the conjunction shown next to it. Here are some practice problems. For each of these, translate the sentences into logical notation. Remember that simple statements should be affirmative, not negative. Pause the screen now as you work on the problems, then, when you're ready to see the solutions, unpause and advance to the next screen. Solution 1. I don't not like Vampire Diaries. If you let the variable V stand for I like Vampire Diaries, a simple statement that is affirmative, then the negation of V is I don't like Vampire Diaries, and then the double negation of V gives you the original statement. Number 2. You can have cake and tea but no jello. Here, you have three components. You can have cake, you can have tea, and you can have jello. To simplify this, let's deal with the first part of the statement. You can have cake and tea. This is a conjunction, which you can write as C and T. The word but actually means the same thing as the word and. Imagine if you say of someone that they are smart but pretty. All you're saying is that they are smart and pretty. No jello translates to the negation of j. Combine all that and you have c and t and the negation of j. You don't have to include brackets in this case since, since it's not ambiguous. Example 3. You can't have your cake and eat it, too. Again, you have to find simple affirmative statements. You can have cake. You can eat your cake. Once you've written out the variables this way, it should make sense that you can write this as the negation of you can have cake and you can eat cake. So it is not the case that you can have your cake and eat your cake. If you wrote either you can have your cake, you can't have your cake, or you can't eat your cake, that's also correct because the original sentence says you can't both have your cake and eat it, so one of them must be negated. A third way to write this is that you can eat your cake only if you haven't if you don't have it. All three of these are, are valid translations. Number four. Only if you are penitent shall you pass. An easier way to think about this is to translate it into the statement, if you're not penitent, then you shall not pass. Here, the simple statements are, you are penitent, and you shall pass. The second version is very directly translated, if you're not penitent, so not x, then you shall not pass, not y. It may be tempting to write the second logical notation, x implies y, but...
that actually says something different. Um, and what it says is not this not correct. For example, if I say only tall people play in the NBA, I am not saying that all tall people play in the NBA. Thank you for watching.